Hello, I'm Yvonne Hughes and in this brief video I'm going to tell you a bit about the research in my laboratories where the general theme is we study various aspects of quantum mechanics using atoms, lasers and magnets. So here's a brief summary of what we're up to. We perform these experiments with atomic vapors. These are atoms that are flying around in a box and we use lasers to interrogate them. And over the years we have in our group developed a code known as a Lexus which allows us to characterize the medium. This is great because it allows us to predict in advance which parameters to choose for our experiments. So the Alexis code has been published and is now used extensively worldwide by numerous other groups. And what do we study? Uh, it's a broad range of interests and it spans the fundamental to the very applied. So a quick example of each. For example, a handful of years ago, we looked at this collective quantum beat in a thermal system and that exactly contradicts what a Nobel laureate says shouldn't happen. So that's a very interesting example of a fundamental problem that we looked at in our lab. We also take advantage of potential applications of our understanding of atom light interactions to make, for example, filters and optical devices. So. Here's one example of a quantum optics experiment. We use magnetic field to separate the energy levels. We then get very simple theory. We do experiment and theory, plot them. We get excellent agreement. And that allowed us to characterize these single photon sources. The idea is the excited atom can emit a pair of photons and they're strongly correlated. In fact, they're entangled. Entanglement is one of the greatest mysteries in quantum mechanics. So these pairs of photons have properties that are not shared by classical objects, and that's very interesting in classical and quantum information processing. And that came from our careful measurements. So that's a fundamental application of what we're doing. We're also excited to start a very new application. So here in Durham, uh, colleagues in QLN, also in CFAI, colleagues at Sheffield University, and soon the rest of the world, because we can make the best atomic filters in our laboratory, we've been invited to join this collaboration where we're going to design better atomic filters, look at sunlight, and characterize the magnetic field. And if you measure the magnetic field of the sun at different heights, that allows you to predict a phenomenon known as space weather. So how does uh, violent eruptions on the sun, for example, influence us on Earth? And the idea is the earlier you know one of these cataclysmic events might be happening, uh, there's more scope for doing something here on Earth. So now I'll hand you over to Claire, who's going to show you what it's actually like in the laboratory. Hi, I'm Claire. I'm a PhD student in the QLM group working on a quantum optics project. We use a hot rubidium vapour, and one of the aims of our project is to produce single photons. We do this by shining two lasers into the vapour cell, and the vapour cell is in a large magnetic field. And then we use photon counters to uh, measure, to see what we get out, um, and to prove that we have single photons. Um, this is a lab behind me that I work in, and in a second I'll give you a little tour and show you the important bits and kind of how things work around here. So here we have the optical table. Um, as you can see, there's these black panels on the side which are for laser safety and just to keep out any stray light from the experiment. Um, as you can see on the table, there's loads of components. There's mirrors and lenses and uh, cells and polarizers and lots of other things. Um, but the main, the, mo the most important things, that blue box you can see there is one of our lasers and that's controlled by this red and white box that you can see above it. Um, and the, so the light comes out of this laser and then it makes its way around the table from mirrors and through fibres until it gets to this cell here. So our vapour cell is contained in this brown coloured cell heater and that itself is, contain is inside the magnet holder. So this, uh, these magnets put the cell in a field of 0.6 tesla um, and we have two lasers which both converge on this vapour cell here and then to look at what comes out we can either observe the fluorescence that comes out forwards um, so along this beam axis and then we collect the light into a fibre at that end 
or we can look at what comes out sideways through this lens filter and into this optical fiber here. So op optical fibers are the same sort of things, um, same things that you get in fiber optic internet and they're just a way of transporting photons with very little loss. Um, so these fibers then plug into photon counters which you can't really see but are hidden under a black blanket uh, at the end of the table to, that's to block out as much extra light as we can because we only want to be seeing the photons from the experiment not just background light and then these photon counters are connected up to our oscilloscope here um, and this you can see that is currently counting the photons we get in so um, this purple trace is a histogram of the photons that we're collecting and you can see that points are gradually being added to it as photons are registered from the photon counters. Um, so yeah that's a brief overview of our setup. Most of our experiments look something like this, like quite complicated, lots of um, lots of components but a lot of it is just sorting out the laser light to get it as we want it to be to do the experiment. Um, yeah, that's just a little overview of what goes on here. Bye. Hi, my name is Fraser and I work on the Magneto-Optical Spectroscopy Project. Uh, and this is me just walking to the lab. As always, I'm a little late, so I'm just running along. Not the most beautiful building on the campus, but certainly the building where the most exciting stuff is happening. So, here we are at what looks like a very complicated experimental setup, but the principles are very simple. We have a laser, as you can see here, and the light in our laser travels along this optical path until it reaches that very uh, large silver object over there, which is our magnet. Our magnet reaches field strengths of about 1.5 Tesla. And in fact, our experiment revolves around what we see in the light transmitted through the atomic vapor at these high magnetic fields. But where is the atomic vapor cell? Well, it's right in the core of the magnet inside the hole at the very center. Um, so I can't show you this vapor cell, but I will show you one I have on hand. So this is a vapor cell with a very similar size to the one in our magnet. Let me zoom out so you can see just how small it is. Indeed, the optical path of the light is through the two circular windows, which only have a depth of about one millimeter or two millimeters. Uh, the white coloring is the rubidium, which is the atomic vapor we are probing in this experiment. So why do we do this? Well, Alexis, our theory program, tells us why. At zero magnetic field, rubidium spectroscopy gives us four transitions in the transmission spectra, uh, which tells us something but not the full picture about the hyperfine structure. By moving to 1.5 Tesla, we see 24 non-overlapping transitions. And this has huge implications for precision measurements, for construction of filters, and I think, most importantly, they look rather beautiful. Thank you for watching the video. I hope that's given you a flavour of what we're up to. Uh, my contact details are there. There are some links to papers. If you're interested in reading more, you can find what we're doing online or feel free to contact me to ask any outstanding questions. Thanks for your attention.